And hello, and welcome to Trading 5 Talents. In today's video, I'm gonna give you seven ideas of what to do when your stock falls way below your strike price of your cash secured put. But before we begin, I just wanna say I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Any trades I mention are not trade recommendations, but either an example trade or a past trade that I've made. So please don't enter into any positions that you may see here. So let's get into the video. So here's the scenario. The current share price of the stock that you own is now way below your actual cost basis. So this can arise from multiple situations. You either purchased shares of a stock and now it's fallen way below what you purchased at, what your cost basis is. So another thing that could have happened is that you were assigned um, a cash secured put. That means you had to purchase shares at the strike price of the put that you sold. If you want more information about cash secured puts, then there's a video link in the description um, so you can watch that. So after you've been assigned, the stock price actually falls below that strike price. So now you're in this scenario where the share price is well below your cost basis. Another situation that may occur is that the stock simply falls way below your put strike price. You haven't been assigned yet, but you're in a cash secured put at a particular strike price, and now the stock takes a um, deep dive, and now it's actually way below your current strike price. So you will be assigned, um, if you, unless you exit for a loss, but you will be assigned this put, forced to buy those shares at a much higher cost basis than where the stock is actually trading at. So we're going to answer the question, what can you do to recover in this particular scenario? Now these are seven methods that I actually use. And so this is just personal opinion. Um, these are just ideas of what you may want to do if you find yourself in this position. So the first idea is to simply average down. That is, you're going to buy more shares at the current lower share price um, in addition to the shares that you already own. So you have a few advantages here. One is that you're going to actually have a lower cost basis. And so these ideas that I present are pretty much in the order of preference. So this is what I would probably do first. Um, now, once you have that lower cost basis, you can start selling covered calls at a lower strike because you've lowered your cost basis. If you want more information about covered calls, then there is a video link in the description about that. You can also stagger your covered calls with multiple contracts. So if you know the individual cost basis of your shares in terms of lots of 100 shares, then now you can sell covered calls against each of those lots independent of one another rather than grouping them all together as one lump um, uh, amount of shares and selling you know, multiple contracts of covered calls at a single strike price, you can now branch those out and actually sell individual covered calls at multiple strike prices. So this is uh, the advantage of knowing the cost basis of your shares. And there's a cost basis calculator that I created in Google Sheets. It's, it's a free download um, and also an accompanying tutorial video on that. Both of those links are down in the description as well. So let me show you an example of um, how that would work and what I'm actually doing right now with the stock Riot. So you can see Riot is currently trading at $26.08 per share. However, I sold a put when this was much higher than that. And you can see in this first row right here, I sold a put at $37.50. It dropped below that. I was assigned. I had to purchase 100 shares at $37.50 um, for this total cost right here. Um, what I then did is sold two more puts at $35.50 and it fell below again and I was assigned these 200 shares. I did it again, sold another put for $33, or that the $33 strike price, and um, I was assigned again, and you can see that I've been assigned all of these uh, particular um, sets or these lots of shares. And then I just waited until the price went down uh, further and further, and I actually just bought 100 shares uh, from the market at $27.59 uh, average price, and then what I did was started selling uh, in the money covered calls at this point. But you can see I'm keeping track of each lot of 100 shares um, that I own. So I can I could take all of these shares, add them up and find my average cost basis, which this cost basis calculator shows it's $33.82. So I could sell 
um, you know, five contracts at $33.50 or $34 if I wanted to. Um, or what I could do is I could sell individual contracts. I could sell one contract um, at the $37.50 strike price. I could sell two covered calls at $35.50. I could sell one covered call at $33. I could sell one covered call, let's say $27.50 or $28. So by knowing the cost basis of each individual lot of 100 shares, I have a little bit more flexibility. I can either sell multiple contracts at one strike price or multiple contracts at different strike prices. So what I've done with Riot is I've actually averaged down in that last scenario and um, I'm able now to stagger my covered calls with multiple contracts at multiple strike prices. So what are some of the disadvantages of this particular idea? Well, it's going to require more capital. If you have to average down, that means you're purchasing stocks, which means you need more capital. And you're also less diversified um, if you continually um, do this particular idea. You keep investing more and more money into one stock, so obviously you're less diversified. So here are just a few notes on this particular idea. You want to keep track of your cost basis as a whole as well as lots of 100 shares, just like I showed you in the cost basis calculator. So again, there's a link in the description, so you can download that if you want to. Otherwise, you can make it in your own spreadsheet. It's pretty easy. All right, idea number two is to sell another cash secured put. So again, the scenario is the current share price is way below your cost basis, so you could sell another cash secured put. And again, as I showed in the Riot example, this is what I did a few times. So here are some advantages to this. You collect more premium because you're selling puts. And if you're assigned, then you're going to be assigned at a lower cost basis. So that has sort of that first idea advantage is that you're lowering your cost basis and now you can start selling covered calls at a lower strike price if you want to. Here are the disadvantages to this idea. Um, once again, it requires more capital. If you're gonna be selling cash secured puts, that means you have to have the capital in order to secure the uh, potential obligation that you have of purchasing 100 shares. So you have to have the money in your account to do this second idea. And if you're assigned, once again, you're purchasing 100 shares or 100 shares per contract you sell, you're going to be less diversified. So here are a few notes um, that I gathered on this particular idea, and that is um, if you sell a cash secured put, you can also sell a covered call at the same time. So let's say you own 100 shares of Riot was our example. You own 100 shares of Riot. You can sell a cover call against those 100 shares that you own. And at the same time, you can actually sell a cash secured put on Riot at uh, a lower strike price. Now, uh, this is what I frequently do. So I'm, I may or may not get as much premium by the covered calls because the current share price is so far below my strike price. So I might not get as much premium as I want to, but I'll couple that with a cash secured put and then I'll be able to gain more premium. Now, if th this strategy actually has a name, if the cash secured put and the covered call have the same expiration date, um, then it's actually called a covered combination. So that's what this second idea is. And uh, again, I perform this one as well uh, when I find myself in this situation. The third idea of what to do when the share price is way below your cost basis is you can just sell longer um, dated uh, covered calls. So longer days to expiration. So just further out in time covered calls. Because if your share price is way below your cost basis, then the strikes around your cost basis are probably going to be very low in premiums. So in order to gain more premiums, you have to sell those further out or you have to sell those closer to the money. So here are the advantages of this. You're going to get better premiums because it's um, there's more time value in it. It also gives more time for your stock to recover. That is, it gives more time for your stock to start moving up towards your actual cost basis to your break-even point. So here are some disadvantages. Um, you're going to be holding the stock longer. Um, unless it shoots up very quickly, you're going to be holding the stock uh, for quite some time, depending on how fast it takes to recover. Also, you're going to be holding the covered call longer. So normally when I sell covered calls, they're usually weeklies. Um, sometimes they go up to 14 days. But if I'm going to be selling longer um, DTE covered calls, um, I could be holding them for four weeks or five weeks. So it may not be a disadvantage to some, but um, I'm just listing it here because you're holding it longer than, I guess I'm holding it longer than I am typically used to. 
So here are a few notes about this idea, and that is um, you can adjust it as the stock moves. So as you see the stock increasing towards your um, covered call strike, you could exit early uh, for a small profit and then simply um, move that out, move that uh, covered call out. You could roll it to um, the next week or the following month or whatever you're selling. So one thing I do want to note about this, the disadvantages of holding the stock longer or holding the covered call longer. Um, this, to some people, this wouldn't be a disadvantage just because the reason you sold the cash secured put is because you were comfortable holding the stock long term in case you had to bag hold it. That is, you're stuck with the stock and you have to just keep it in your portfolio. Remember, we're not selling cash secured puts on stocks that um, we don't like. We are selling them on stocks that we do like, so we shouldn't mind holding them. So really, this may not be a disadvantage. Okay, the fourth idea is to simply wait. Uh, for an upward move in your stock so it gets closer to your break-even price. So here are the advantages of this idea. Um, as the stock moves upward closer to your break-even price, you can now sell covered calls closer to your cost basis, or if it moves higher, you can sell them above your cost basis so you could also potentially get capital gains. So here's a disadvantage. That is, you're going to hold the stock longer, but as we discussed in the previous idea, this may not be a disadvantage at all, especially if this is a dividend stock. You might also be collecting a dividend. So here are a few notes that I have for this idea. Um, you should check the premiums often. So just because um, you're waiting for the stock and you're not actually selling calls against it because the premiums are so low, um, if it were me, and again, this is what I do, is I check the premiums every day to see if there's some uh, type of uh, increase in premium value. And I like to take note of high volatility events. For example, if there's earnings coming up, um, if there's just a general increase of volatility in the market, um, it might boost premiums or it might inflate the premiums of this particular stock that I'm holding. So I want to check them quite often. Uh, because the stock may not actually have to move that high upward uh, in order for the premiums to be attractive to start selling covered calls on. Okay, idea number five is, and this is a little bit more risky, sell covered calls below your cost basis. So what are the advantages of this? The first advantage is you're going to collect a lot more premium because you're getting closer to the money and you're not as far out of the money as um, your cost basis would be. So you're going to get more premium for selling. Disadvantage, it's a lot more risk because if the uh, stock moves up and expires, you know, above your call strike, then you could or then you will be assigned this contract. You will be forced to sell your shares at that strike price, which is below your cost basis. And there's going to be a possible capital loss if you get assigned. So there is risk there. Um, and so that risk is sort of offset by the more premium that you get. So it's, again, something that you're going to have to check to see if that risk is, um, is outweighed by the premium that you're going to be collecting. So just a few notes on this. Um, you can reduce the risk um, by increasing your chance of profit. So that is, you're going to be decreasing the delta um, of this particular option. So remember, if your um, delta of your covered call is approximately 0.3, that means there's approximately 70% chance that it would um, expire out of the money. But if you decrease that delta, let's say down to 0.2 or 0.1, then there's going to be an either 80 or 90% chance that it's going to expire out of the money. That is, um, there's less risk of you getting assigned because the stock most likely will not move that high by that expiration date. If you do perform this particular um, idea in your scenario and you're selling covered calls below your cost basis, um, basically, the takeaway is don't sell them so close to at the money just because the premiums are good. You still want to give yourself that room and you want to have probability on your side that you're not going to be assigned this contract below your cost basis because you don't want to incur that capital loss. Another way to mitigate the risk in this scenario is you just close out early. So if you see that um, the stock is moving too close to your strike and you don't want to be assigned them, just close this early or roll it to the next week or the next month or whatever it is you're trading. So as I said before, um, there's seven ideas here and the first ideas are the ones that I would prefer and the um, as we get towards the end of the list, these are the ideas that I would do less and less or um, they're not as attractive to me, but I still have done them. I have sold cover calls below my cost basis um, because 
the stock had moved so far below my cost basis that I felt that's what I needed to do. Idea number six is you buy a protective put. So this is actually purchasing a put. Normally we don't do that here at Trading 5 Talents. We, we're doing the wheel strategy, so we're selling to open our positions. We're not buying to open our positions. But this idea, um, this might actually work in your particular scenario. So what are the advantages of this? Well, it protects you against further downside moves of the stock. If that stock is continually going down and down and down, buying a put or going long on a put means that the put value increases as the underlying asset, the stock in your case, as it goes down. So it would protect against further downside moves. Disadvantage, there's a possible loss on this put. So if you purchase a put, that means you are, are you have the, a bearish sentiment on the asset and you think that it's going to be going down. But if it actually starts going up, now you're going to be losing money on this put. So that could be a disadvantage to you. So here are some notes. I would only use this and I only have used this if I have a very bearish outlook on this stock short term. So if I really feel that a stock is going to continually go down, I will buy a put. Now, when I do this though, um, I want to sell a covered call at the same time. And actually, if you sell a covered call and you buy a put, at the same time, this strategy has a name as well. It's called a protective collar or just a collar. So you own 100 shares, you're selling a covered call, and you're buying a put. Now, ideally, the amount that you pay for your put, the premium that you're paying for your put, ideally, it should be less than the covered call credit that you're receiving. So basically you're getting this put for free and you're still collecting premium on the overall trade. And this is like free insurance because if the stock continually goes down, your put would increase in value and then you can sell it to close it and get that profit. Meanwhile, because the stock is going down, your covered call is going to increase as well. And then you can exit that position for a gain as well. When I've done this before, um, what I've done is I've sold multiple covered calls on stocks on a stock that I owned and then I bought one put so that the premium from the multiple covered calls was greater than the premium that I paid for the one put as protection. So the stock started going down, I closed out my protective put for a small gain and then I was able to close out my covered calls for gains as well. But again, only use this if you have a very short term bearish outlook on the stock. And the last idea is, and this is probably my least favorite, um, and that is hide a loss with a gain. So what does that mean? That means you're just taking a loss on this particular stock. So this advantage is it's just gonna free up the capital. You're, you're holding all of this stock um, and it's not going back up to your cost basis. So you would just cut your losses and sell the stock and you would free up that capital to make another trade with disadvantages, you're going to take a loss. You're going to have capital loss on this particular trade because the share price is now below where you actually purchased it. So some notes about this idea is that the gain um, that you're coupling this with or that you're um, pairing this with is actually greater than your capital loss. You know, in my case, what I've done is I had purchased some stock, um, sold covered calls on it for a while, and then the stock price just dropped way below. It was like 40% or 50% below my cost basis. And um, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to get out of it um, completely because I, I saw that there was other trades that would be more profitable. So what I did is when I had a really good profit on some premiums that I sold on other trades, I simply just sold my shares for a loss, but that loss was less than the premiums that I'd gained on other trades. Okay, so the gains that I coupled it with were greater than the capital loss I took on this stock. And why I did that is because I was focusing on my overall monthly goal. If I did this, I still would have attained my monthly goal and I would free up the capital and I would get that out of my portfolio. So I wasn't looking at just a trade by trade basis and you know never wanting to take a loss. Um, I, I calculated it out and by making this trade, yes, I would take a loss, but it would not hurt my monthly goal. I still achieved that and it would free up capital to hopefully trade in uh, better setups 
later on. So there you go. So here are seven ideas that you can use if the share price falls way below your cost basis um, when you're trading the wheel strategy. So if you have any questions about this topic or about selling of options in general, just leave a comment down below or follow me on Twitter and ask me there and I'll answer it as quickly as possible. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about the wheel strategy and how I use it for lifestyle trading, click on the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you can catch all the updates. Until next time, trade wisely and take care.